two of what I would call the best flight sim rudders in this sort of mid to high end price range go head to head in this video. But which one actually takes the crown? The One Wing Orion or the Verpo VPC Ace Interceptors? Now I've reviewed these individually before, links to both of these videos in the description. But in this video we're going to split the hairs and also look at the key differences and figure out which set is actually better or better for you. I'll also mention that the comparison includes the damper mod on both rudder pedals which can be purchased separately. Price wise the Verpos come in at 375 USD while the One Wing Orion comes in at 330 USD and that's a $45 difference. Not taking into account potential import taxes, delivery fees, just depending on where you live. I also think that One Wing now holds stock in the USA, correct me if I'm wrong, and they also hold some stock in Australia, while Verpo are based in the EU, so just keep that in mind. Based on price, they are running the same race, although One Wing are slightly ahead on face value, but we all know that old saying, never judge a book by its cover. So, for the feature set, both of these bases deliver two things. Toe brakes and yaw or rudder control. As far as yaw goes, you'll get about 150 millimeters throw with the Verpals and 180 to 190 on the one wing. So again, the one wing is just, you know, it's given us a little bit more. It is worth noting, however, that the length of the travel, I reckon as long as it's over the 130 millimeter mark, it's gonna feel pretty similar. You may even prefer the shorter travel depending on which planes you like to fly. Both have dampers which in my opinion is absolutely needed and it makes an incredible difference. But we'll talk about the dampers later as there's something a little, you could say odd, going on here. Both have toe brakes. Maybe One Wing has it again here just with the design of the release pin. Also it feels like there's some extra, like some extra damping through the pedals. Certainly when you get to that end point where the, um, the the brake pedal kind of stops. Now one of the tips that I do have that when you first get your one wing rudders you'll have to bolt these pedals on and there's a large through bolt that you have to push through here. Now just do not over tighten it because if you over tighten that you're just going to create a sort of stickiness effect and it will start to squeak. So just be careful with that. Obviously with both of them having dampers, you can completely remove the springs and use these on a non-return setting. Now to the design and the build quality. I'll start by saying that both are exceptional. Full metal builds with cams, springs and dampers. But you'll see lots of physical differences. The main part that's gonna make the difference though is the pedal design. Purple have went with a wider, slightly larger pedal face overall, with one wing using a smaller, more compact pedal. The purple pedal is more suited to having a full flat foot on the pedal, where the one wing's design caters for more using the rudders like you would in a GA aircraft or an old warbird like a P-51, just keeping your heels on the floor and using your toes to push. This isn't to say that you can't do this with the Verpal, it's still possible and it works well in that situation but again one wing has a slight win here. One of the more important points is that the pedal range on the Verpals won't be able to reach the same vertical angle as the one wing pedals. This is a problem that I came across mounting them to my full cockpit. You see the pedal tray sits quite high. I needed the toe brake angle to be much more... <coughs> Jesus. I needed the toe brake angle to be much more acute so that I could comfortably use the brakes. This wasn't an issue with the one wings, as you can clearly see here how vertical they actually sit. So again here, there's some points that head one wings way. As I said before, both sets of pedals are a full metal build. One wing going for a sort of chunkier build in terms of looks. That doesn't seem to translate into anything more than just a visual difference at this point. Verpal have went for what I think is a, a layered sort of laser cut steel design. Look, both sets of rudders are extremely sturdy. Size wise, the Verpals are 535 millimeters edge to edge 
and the one wing coming in at 525. So fairly wide on both sets, maybe even too wide, depending on what planes you fly. Mounting both of these, the Verpals do have a clear advantage. I've said it before, one wing's mounting system is a bit odd and frustrating with those weird mini extrusion legs. And now for the way the pedals move. So the design of both pedals swing around the same sort of arc, so no real differences there. Both are more or less plug and play via USB. It's at this point you would say the one wing pedals are definitely racking up the points here, but it's all been fairly like small stuff. Even with the differences mentioned, they're still only, uh, what do they say? In Australian terms, a bee's dick. There's only a bee's dick difference. In use, I can't pick anything between them in terms of accuracy. Both sets are quite incredible for the price and as accurate as you can get. So they are close all round, but that gap is about to change. The Verpal, to me, had a clear advantage with the damper setup and their pedals. The Verpals are smoother, more substantial feeling. I can't feel any stickiness even on those minute movements, no matter how much I look for it. And the return of the pedal underfoot just feels more natural. Now, I did mention earlier about something odd, and these dampers look eerily similar. They might even be from the same factory. At least that's what I thought when I first saw them together. Yet the one wing damper in use feels like the cheaper of the two. With one wing, I'm running the damper on full strength to achieve the feeling that I like, yet the Verpal is sitting around 65 to 70%. And because I'm running the one wing damper on full strength, I think there's a very slight stickiness when moving around that center region, you know, when you kind of cross over. It's very minuscule, but it's there, and I don't think I picked it up in my original review. It wasn't until I get a hold of a set of these that I actually sort of noticed the difference. So all those little wins that the one wing pedals were getting sort of get like pushed aside for the sheer quality of the damper. Now, don't get me wrong, both of these pedals with the dampers are great. We are splitting hairs here, but there is one specific reason you might want either or and I'll run through that now. As I mentioned earlier, I have the one wing rudders mounted to my full cockpit, which is kind of like my daily flyer, if you like. This is because the pedal tray on the cockpit sits quite high, therefore my legs are fairly elevated, making it difficult to get my toes over the toe brakes. I just can't get the pedal face vertical enough on the Verpal rudder pedals. So for me, I'm kind of forced into having the one wing rudders on the full cockpit. That leaves me with the second combat flight setup, which is just a seat with the rudders on the floor. At this angle, the Verpal rudders are fine. You know, they're great. So to sum it up, I'll say this. One wing has wider adjustments on the pedals, a slightly heavier build quality, and better feeling toe brakes. But the Verpal feel through the rudder axis is a clear winner for smoothness, with a beefier feel underfoot. I think it's got a lot to do with the damper and the mechanics. So I'm gonna say the Verpal's edge it out over the one wing Orion's by a small margin. The smoothness of the rudder axis, which is the main draw card, trumps one wing's little wins along the way. Hopefully that helped you make the right decision. Let me know in the comments which ones you would go for.